You might have read the title of this video and thought, Martin, have you lost it? But I've got two words for you. Pacific Rim. Not the geographic region, but the movie that's out this week. In case you're not a massive film geek like me, it's about giant monsters rising out of a portal in the Pacific and wreaking havoc on mankind. Like you do when you're a giant monster. To combat this threat, we've designed giant robots to fight them. And it's directed by Guillermo del Toro. That's probably got you mega hyped for the film. But I'm gonna ruin that for you now by being a massive physics pedant and ask whether giant robots fighting giant monsters is a good idea in real life. One of the main problems with scaling things up in size is the square cube law, which was first described back in 1638 by Galileo, who probably wasn't thinking about giant monsters and robots at the time. At its heart is simply maths. It says if you make something bigger by multiplying its dimensions by some number, the object's surface area will increase as the square of that number, whereas its volume will increase by the cube. So for instance, if we increase something by timesing the dimensions by 10, the surface area goes up a hundredfold, but the volume goes up a thousandfold. And that's gonna have huge implications on our giant robots and monsters. Let's start with giant monsters, like the subscriber saw here. In 1926, JBS Haldane wrote the awesomely titled essay called On Being the Right Size. In it, he pointed out that a 60-foot man would actually break his thighs on every step due to the square cube law. Basically, each square inch of thigh bone would be subjected to 10 times a regular human's weight. And that's not the only problem that our giant would have. He'd struggle to move because of the ratio of weight to muscle surface area. And even more troublesome, his heart wouldn't be able to get all the blood around the body. Basically, he's more of a threat to himself than to us. Haldane used these arguments to explain why large animals don't look like small animals. So you really don't ever have to worry about being attacked by a giant spider. The problem in the movies though, is they generally depict giant monsters that are sort of humanly proportioned and we know that wouldn't work. The only monsters I'd be scared of are the ones in the oceans because the effect of buoyancy can cancel out to some extent those gravity effects. On to giant robots. The biggest functional robot at the moment is Vulcan Engineering's Megabot, which has the best name ever. It's an electric articulated arm with a reach of 20 feet and can carry the weight of about 20 people. Probably a bit fewer if they're McDonald's enthusiasts. But that's a massive way off the giant mecha in Pacific Rim. Whatever they're made of, giant robots are going to be immensely heavy. So before I ask how many thousands of batteries they're gonna need, whether they'll be able to balance upright, or if the mechanical parts can take the strain of all that weight, I have to ask, what shoe size are you? You see, all that massive weight has to be supported by the area in contact with the ground, exerting a massive pressure. The Pacific Rim robots are just gonna sink, cutting through concrete like a knife through butter. In summary, our real-life epic battle of giant robots versus giant monsters features a rather fragile robot waist deep in the ground trying to attack a heart attack suffering reptile clinging on to its skyscraper zimmer frame. That's not a film I want to go and watch. So, to world leaders everywhere, I say this. If your nation is attacked by giant monsters, do not spend billions creating giant robots to fight them. Just wait for them to pass out. It'll only be about 15 minutes. Subscribe to the human.